The new DJ rework is extremely complex with multiple ability options, buff options, and strategies. I wouldn't blame you for simply placing the DJ on one mode and calling it a day, possibly losing out on money or DPS. But in this video, you will learn in-depth strategies on how to effectively use the new DJ rework, obliterating every boss and even bringing Void Reaver to a halt. The DJ has three different tracks, the purple track, the green track, and the red track. You can switch between these tracks for different types of buffs. Purple is range, green is discount, and red is damage. There's also an ability, which changes between tracks, which I'll get to later. For now, let's talk stats. We'll talk about the tracks in a second, but the main DJ booth cost and range is 1200 cost for 12 range at level 0, 300 cost for 15 range at level 1, 1250 cost for level 2, 3000 cost for level 3, 8000 cost and 16.5 range for level 4, and $20,000 for 18.5 range, totaling for 33750 cash. Now, I'll list the stats from the tracks themselves. The purple track starts at 12.5% range bonus and goes to 15% at level 2, 7.5% at level 3, 22.5% at level 4, and 25% at max. The purple track also gains 10% discount and damage buff at max, inheriting it from the other tracks. The second track, the green track, starts at 5% discount, then goes to 7.5% discount at level 2, 10% discount at level 3, 12.5% discount at level 4, and caps out at 15% discount at max. It also inherits 10% damage buff and 12.5% range buff at max. The final track, the red track, is the only track to be unlocked later in the tower at level 2, starting with 10% damage buff. It proceeds to 12.5% at level 3, 15% at level 4, and gains a whopping 20% damage boost at max. Now that we've established the raw stats, I'll tell you what the ability does. The drop the beat ability can be used once every 30 seconds and changes depending on which track you've selected. The purple track slows, stuns, and knocks back enemies in the range of DJ. It pulses three times and can slow down any enemy, including major bosses. On level 4, it deals more knockback, slows for longer, and can hit more enemies. At max, it pulses 4 times instead of 3 times and deals even more knockback and slows for even longer. The range increase on both levels also helps this ability. This ability can be extremely useful for any situation, due to it slowing literally any enemy. Small enemies with no stun resistance like the polluted rushers, souls, and even vindicators get absolutely befuddled by this ability. The green track ability simply makes money based on the amount of towers in the range, starting at 250 base cash and getting 35 cash per tower for max at $600 at 10 towers. At level 4, the ability is upgraded to 500 base cash, 50 cash per tower, and 1250 max cash at 15 towers. At max, it gains 750 base cash, 75 cash per tower, and 2250 max cash at 20 towers. This ability is pretty cool. You get a free bundle of cash every 30 seconds and you can make some serious bonus money with it. Anyways, time for the final ability, the red track. This ability does 18 damage to a seemingly infinite number of enemies, and also melts 5% defense per pulse, which there are 3 of per ability. This ability goes from 18 to 30 damage, and from 5% to 7% defense melt per pulse. At max, it does a whopping 50 damage per pulse, and the defense melt goes up to 10% per pulse, and there's an extra 4th pulse for a total of 200 damage and 40% defense melting for every enemy in the DJ's range. So, I forgot to add this into the script, and I just want to say now, the damage buff rounds down. So, the damage buff rounds down, which means that you should not be using the damage buff on towers that won't benefit from it. Like, if you're using, like, Shotgunner, or, like, Ace Pilot, or some other tower that doesn't really have a lot of damage, you should not use the damage buff. So, just make sure that you're using it correctly. Now that we know all about the DJ booth, let's test it out in a real environment. I concocted two areas to test it in. The first was a solo Molten speedrun, where I had to beat Molten as fast as I possibly could. DJ was already meta in the old speedrun, and seeing as it now gives a juicy 20% damage buff, I thought that I could improve my time of 1016 with the tower's Brawler, Warden, Thumb, Commander, and the one and only DJ booth. The reason I'm using Brawler and not Gladiator Shotgunner is because Brawler has insanely good cost efficiency and obliterates all the mid-game waves at the cost of only a few seconds early game. I placed my two Brawlers for early game, then started farming for Wave 10, the wave I go against the threatening normal boss, which has 160 health. It is already dead. I then one-tapped wave 12 and got Wardens and Commander for wave 13. I farmed until wave 15 where I placed the first DJ booth. I got it to level 3 and started using the green track and its money-making ability. 
Honestly, maxing farms probably would have been better for my ego, but whatever. I needed to get the DJ anyways for the extra damage buff so that I could one tap the wave 19 necromancer. On wave 22, I had 4 max farms and a level 3 DJ. I switched it to damage and cut the slow boss in no more than 2 seconds. I slightly time lost wave 40 due to the fact that I didn't get as many wardens as I needed, but I went and maxed all my farms on wave 25 and then maxed DJ. I maxed a commander and timed an APC to insta-kill wave 30. Waves 31 to 39 were easy, and it was time for wave 40, where the damage buff on DJ really chined. I went into wave 40 with almost all my troops maxed, and... He got obliterated. But actually, this kill wasn't a straight 20% faster due to the damage buff. The thing is, the reduction of range from 35% to 12.5% in the DJ rework made it so that the molten boss wasn't in range of a large portion of my wardens. But I had a plan for next time. I plan to use the purple track ability to slow down the molten boss, then immediately switch back to the red damage track to gain the buff. I also slightly time lost another wave, so I was thinking that I could save around 2 to 3 seconds, maybe getting 10 12. I did a run with this strategy, and my molten boss kill was extremely good, and I got 10 14 with the new strategy. But I then looked at the world record I tied with, and I noticed something really weird. All of his time saves were significantly worse than mine, but we were still on the exact same base. In 2023, somebody told me that it doesn't matter how much you time save as long as you get the full second time save. This means that an extremely fast 055 kill is the exact same as an extremely slow 055 kill. At the time in 2023, I examined a run and found out it was true, but I went into a group chat with a bunch of pro players with this information and they all gaslighted me into thinking I was crazy and it didn't exist. A whole year later in 2024, and I can confirm I am not crazy, it really does exist, and now you can only time save in full seconds. With this knowledge, I decided to quit. I didn't feel like speedrunning in increments of one second and fully disregarding the millisecond save. I was okay with 1014. So, what did we learn from this? First of all, TDS is weird, why is the timer work like that? But also, we saw both the purple track and the green track ability in action. The purple track improved the molten boss kill by a mile with its boss slowdown and the green ability improved my economy, while the red ability was useless due to not needing crowd control or defense melting here. The second scenario I wanted to test was solo hardcore, which is pretty much the opposite of speedrunning. Your only goal is to survive the 50 wave gauntlet with no teammates whatsoever, and doing it quickly does not matter. So, I went into crossroads with the loadout mercenary base, engineer, golden minigunner, ranger, and DJ booth. Mercenary base was for the 20% damage buff in its Valba units, engineer was for early game and DPS, golden minigunner and ranger were purely for void over DPS, and the DJ booth was valuable for its stalling potential and 20% damage buff. I went into the game and used Engineer for early game, and you might be wondering what I'm doing for Wave 25, considering I have no economy towers, and these towers can't really deal with Wave 25 without them. The truth is, I'm using Mercenary Base. You may be surprised, but the level 3 riflemen actually have hidden detection. I got past early game with Mercenary Base and Engineer and placed my DJ booth on Wave 33. I got it to level 3 and started using its money making ability, then I maxed my Engineer very early on Wave 35. I then upgraded my DJ to max on wave 36 and killed the gravedigger with my grenadiers and engineers. Waves 37 to 44 were a breeze and wave 45 was upon us, the first difficulty spike in 9 waves. It got close but my engineers took out the mob of enemies and the following waves 46 to 49 were pretty easy. I placed and maxed all my gold minis, rangers, and mercenary bases and wave 50 was here. The vindicators and void roof respawned and all my DPS probably got obliterated by them. As my main DPS were Golden Mini and Engineer, and they were extremely stunnable, it kinda led to a snowball effect where because all my DPS towers were stunned, the Vindicators were alive and stunned all my towers. But finally, the Rangers and Mercenary Base were able to finish off all the random garbage, and my towers were unstunned and locked onto the Void River, who in that time had already moved past one third of the entire map. Not good. By the time Void Raver is usually at his rage mode, I still had 900,000 HP left on Void Raver, a whole 300,000 HP late. He went into rage mode way later than I'd have liked, and also double stomped and killed all of my riflemen and engineers. It was looking hopeless, but then this happened. I finally used the purple track ability, because at this time I didn't even know it slowed bosses. Thank you, Penguin Dude. And it slowed Void Raver to an absolute halt saving my run entirely. 
I won without even moving my towers. So, what did I learn about DJ in this run? Well, the red ability kinda sucks for this, and the purple ability is amazing. Max DJ also helps an amazing amount for mid game over level 4 due to it inheriting all tracks buffs. You shouldn't focus on getting DJ too soon, otherwise you might risk losing. I also beat Solo Polluted Wastelands 2 with DJ, but this script's already 12,000 characters. I'll also say a few scouter tips that you should use, because I didn't know where else to put them. If you're planning to use the purple ability, switch it to purple 15 seconds prior to use so that you can immediately switch to red for more DPS. Don't prioritize DJ until you have a solidified defense, I've made this mistake myself before. Whenever the current wave isn't difficult, switch it to green and use the ability to for some extra cash. Don't upgrade towers until you've switched your DJ to green unless you're in a dire situation. If you need even more range than the 18.5 it already has, a level 2 ranger near the DJ can buff it to 21 range. The purple track, though having a relatively useless buff compared to raw damage and extra discount, can be useful if your tower barely doesn't see a part of the track and you need it to see it. Anyways, that's all the tips, guides, and strategies I have today, and I hope you'll be able to use DJ like a pro after this. Like my channel and sub to the video. Bye!